Hey guys, it's um, it's Finch here. We're back for another one of these. Um, there's gonna be at least a couple minutes before I get into the Pokemon themselves. However, um, I just want to preface this by saying, first and foremost, I really appreciated the um, the feedback I got. All of it, but pretty much all of it was positive. Um, really motivates me to do more videos like this. Um, beyond the viability rankings themselves, also perhaps diving into other concepts behind the game, my thinking. Um, metagame analysis, etc. Um, not really, I never really had an overarching plan for what I was going to do with my channel, or even how frequently I was going to use it, but I've been enjoying it more as of late, so needless to say, I'm uploading more videos, as you can see here, and perhaps with my recent history as well, if you've been following, which I hope you have, but um, anyway, today's going to be a bit of um, an experimental video in the sense that while I'm doing the same thing as last time, I'm actually using this to kind of get my voice going and talk a bit, but without really overdoing it, because I have a really big interview in 90 minutes. And um, that obviously takes um, priority over this, so I'm going to probably only do this for like 30 or 40 minutes so I can prepare right before the interview just a bit more. Um, and I don't want to tire out my voice, but I also want to like exercise enough to where it's like in like a clear condition. So since I've been just kind of quietly sitting through lectures all morning, I feel like this is the best kind of mid-ground approach to just kind of A, get content out, B, um, get my voice going, and C, not overdo it. Um, so also, I'm going to probably be drinking a lot of water throughout like I am right now. So excuse that, my water bottle is kind of like obnoxiously shaky, but anyway, um, so last time we went through everything in S and A+, plus. so this time, and I know I'm using a fucking Google Doc, um, just to make this list, um, no aesthetics or anything, I, I'm sorry, um, I'm going through A and A-, minus. Um, I might have to cut midway through A-, minus. depends, I'm trying to, get to, trying to be done with this by 210, it's actually 138 now. So, yeah, um, I'm just going to pause for a second, and then I'm going to get into all the Pokemon. All right. All right, so we're back. So, A, um, strong common picks that are staples slash common picks and specific strong archetypes. Um, what I mean by that is that Pokemon you see fairly often on sand teams, but perhaps are not as, um, like, not as constantly seen as Amoongus or Skarmory or um, Excadrill, for example, which are Pokemon that you're going to see a lot on sand, but also have, like, very clear defined rules that, like, are hard to interchange. Like, for example, Skarmory, um, phenomenal check to ground types, while also a spiker. It's co common enough to the point where a lot of Poke teams make use of Magnezone, It, and Ferrothorn. Um, Skarmory, honestly, could maybe be high A, but yeah, um, either way. Um, beyond that, Amoongus, for example, just, like, one of the few Keldeo checks right now. Um, also, just a great sponge. Sleep is so fucking ridiculously good. Um... But yeah, um, you'll see that I, I rank those Pokemon over Pokemon that, in my opinion, are still fantastic, like Liscor and especially Royal and W, but maybe just don't see the same exact level of usage or you know, the same niche. I mean, I think Skarmory could probably be an A at this point, um, honestly. But um, yeah, everything else in A plus kind of stands out a bit more, besides maybe the Jirachi Skarmory, too. Um, those probably could be A. And um, anyway, so let's go into A. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to try and explain the differentiation. And also go through the niches and um, the roles of these Pokemon. So Gliscor being the top of A, um, if this was a bit over a year ago, like even before SPL9, people would be saying, no way, is this A minus, maybe B plus, but not nah, um, Haunt, Earthquake, Ice Fang, or I guess you could see Toxic or Knockoff in the slot. Plus Protect, Gliscor has really um, been rampant in the metagame. You'll notice that during World Cup, a couple of people used it during last SPL, a couple of people used it during this SPL, a lot of people used it during um, S Tour. A lot of people used it. Um, it just it kind of took over on sand balance as one of those like options that really does well in shutting down opposing sand balances, like swinging it in your favor. Um, it, it beat spikers. It checked old Rio Nicholas, meaning not, the non inch trace variants. Um, power, I mean, it, it did taunt plus the combination of sand and spikes and shit like um, Ferrothorn takes down from Earthquake. Skarmory doesn't usually run leftovers and it gets shut down by taunt, etc. I mean, just all these things make Gliscor so impossible to play against if you don't have, like, a specific countermeasure. And, I mean, a lot of teams have, like, for example, like, Protect Leftovers Caldeo, but even Sand, and you take, like, an Earthquake, you take Ross, like, you can only switch in once or twice. Rotom W is an okay answer, but it gets worn down as well, and Hydro Pump doesn't usually kill in one. So, I mean, if you get that, like, knocked off or burnt, then it goes a long way. Just the fact you've got Protect plus Sand going is really huge, in my opinion. Um, hmm. Um... Just trying to think here. Oh yeah, so also, um, another thing to note about Gliscor, while um, the Taunt set obviously rose to not only relevance, as it was somewhat relevant before, but just like prevalence, like very, 
noteworthy importance in the metagame. The Swords Dance set also has grown a bit in usage. While it's not necessarily at the same height as the Taunt set, um, you see that there are some sand teams with Magazine plus Swords Dance plus score. Um, I know ABR used one against what I think was FLCL in the first round of Smug Tour that I quite liked. I've actually used a very similar six, um, different EVs and filler moves. I think same Pokemon, actually. Um, and also then, speaking of ABR, I think he actually is one of the biggest um, advocates of this concept. Um, he also used it on his son team that he used against Dice, and then ZF used it on this team that he slash Dice, I, I can't give credit to Dice, against... Um, I believe it was High Impulse, and then I used both of those teams later on in SPL myself, and Energy used one as well against the Kama. Energy unfortunately messed it up badly, but um, I won one, and then Poet kind of got fortunate against me, and what was just kind of a throwaway game, Week 9, his team already clinched, my team was already out. I mean, it is what it is. I kind of got annoyed when um, Ray Scarface kept saying I choked, when it was pretty obvious that I didn't. I could actually go through I, I might upload my SPL game still. So. I don't want to get too far out of the way, but I mean... It's kind of justice, so fuck the pirates. Um, but yeah, anyway, um, beyond that, Gliscor in itself, and I'm sorry for the tangent, I just kind of salty at that team still. But I guess it's being a dead horse now. But yeah, to Gliscor, um, just a great pick right now. Um, and admittedly, the metagame, the, the way the old generation metagames work, in my eyes, and this is a bit of a tangent, but it, it ties into it. And I think you guys kind of like when I go off on these tangents, it gives us like these backstories anyway, so I'm just going to go with it and say what's on my mind. Um, the, the, the way that old vision metagames games work is that, like, a trend pops up, and then a counter trend pops up, and so on and so forth. And that's how it keeps evolving over time. So, for example, during um, mid to late 2018, Gliscor came as, like, this anti-sand balance, sand balance Pokemon that just worked really well. It checked Exedrill, which was kind of still out there. It kept um, the Scarf ground types in check, which was nice. Um, and prevented spikes while also still being a bit of a bulkier passive presence. Um, Taunt suffocated a lot. It checked normal Rio Nicholas, um, R, etc. Um, so yeah, it was really a good metagame pick at that point in time. However, then as 29 came, the Ace Chris Rio Nicholas wave came, and that makes Gliscor its bitch. I mean, I think he's doing like 20 net after leftovers, if even. Ace Press at plus one kills you. At neutral, I mean, if you're special de defensive, it might do like 60, 65. But if you're physically defensive, it's doing like 80, 85, to the point where it even has a chance to kill off the rocks, I think, depending on the spread. And also, a plus one, it's, it's pretty much always killing you. And you don't even have Roost on that set either, and you can't PP stall it. Um, so yeah, I mean, it goes from countering your Nicholas to being countered by it. Like, Rear Nicholas was amazing blue score measure during his spell with the Um So yeah, that's like kind of a shift. And now you're seeing in response to Rear Nicholas, and this isn't fully in fledged, fully in effect yet, but now you're seeing a lot more Offensive Sand Force or Sword Sand Sand Force, just like Sand Force Extra Drill. Why? Because Sand Force walls Bolt Beam to when the, the beam is HP Ice. Because, like, plus one HP Ice is doing like a third Dex Drill, a lot of them have leftovers. And then in Sand, you have Iron Head and Earthquake. Iron Head can flinch, Earthquake is doing a lot. I mean, if it's max attack at two kilos in Sand, but if not, then it's still doing a decent amount. And Iron Head just one or two flinches. The point where you basically chuck the Nicholas consistently with that. So then you're probably going to see. Um, arise in, say, Rodan W is that makes um, Sandforce its bitch or Gliscor in the near future. Or maybe even Slowbro. Um, another thing that I think is pretty decent right now. Um, it's going to go cyclically. Um, there are also a couple other techs that I've been kind of in favor of. But um, anyway, I'm going to keep those to myself. But I think that the way the metagame works is kind of cyclical. And that's why Ryu Nicholas's rating right now is kind of bloated. I have an A+. Plus. But I think a lot of people would argue that that's a bit too reactionary and it could be an A. And I think that's fair, but I think just given the product we're seeing right now, it should be A+, plus, but we should also be very quick to move it down to A once it falls apart. But that's also, I think, X-Drill is um, A+, plus as well. It's always been pretty good since it got out, but now it's like at its peak. Like, now it's really good. Because we're seeing that, like, slightly type counteracted by Tar plus Drill, the kind of cycle, then anti-Tar Drill measure, et cetera, et cetera. And that's just going to keep going. I think that's how Black White is going to kind of evolve. And the only constant is going to be um, the fact that that rain is pretty good. Um, I mean, rain is always going to be pretty good, in my opinion. So I feel as if um, rain being a constant is weird, as it sort of has a bit more variance in the matchup spectrum. But at the same time, sand having ways to vary and viability differentiating um, is kind of cool in itself, if only because it keeps metagame interesting. Because a lot of people are like, oh, no, sand balance runs the metagame. It's always boring. But no, there, there are so many different strategies to make use of. I feel like Sand Balance is the most interesting archetype, if anything, and Sand Bulky Offense. So, 
I don't know. There are a lot of naysayers out there, and I um I don't fuck with them. I'm just gonna respond to Snapchat, and then we're gonna meet Rodem Wash. Um. Yeah. Sorry. Um. All right. So Rodem Wash. Um. This thing is something that I'm notoriously much higher on than the average guy. But I mean, I think people are finally starting to notice how good it is. Um. See, black and white, and I stressed on this. I stressed on this a lot in my last video. But black and white is a metagame where early game dynamic is such a huge thing. And I feel like if you have Rotom Wash or Amoongus, 9 out of 10 games, and the outlier with Rotom W teams is mainly if you're facing a Breloom team, but you could basically lead with Rotom Wash. And if it's not, and they, they don't really, there's not much they could want to kill you. Um, Specs Latios, you live. Specs High Dragon, you live. Um, CB Track, and you almost always live. It's just like if you face like a lead choice band of Dragonite or lead Chan Black, then you're kind of in an awkward spot. But like, lead with Rotom W, and then it gets a wisp off. It, like, let, let's say they lead with your fucking Ferrothorn. Getting a wisp off turn one as they spike is in the end is literally a positive interaction for most teams that I build, in my opinion. Sure, you're letting the spike up turn one, but that wisp means it's to die. And once it, it dies sooner, then your Latios gets free kills. And also, you get a Volt Switch out to your own Hazard Setter slash. You can take advantage of it. Like, it's huge. I just think that Rotom W on itself, uh, sure, on paper, it gets checked by Ferrothorn. And sure, on paper, Amoongus is annoying. The fact that you get a burn on them, you get bolt out every time, and they force them in, like, it's so huge. Rotom W is, like, Tapu Koko and SM, but with 12% burns on steroids with insane longevity and fucking Earthquake. Like, like Rotom Wash is such an amazing game flow Pokemon on both the offensive teams. I feel like so many people underrate it and try to, like, say, okay... I need, like, hard counters to everything. In black-white, having, like, two soft checks to a lot of things, not named Keldeo. You always need at least, like, Eladios or Amoongus and Keldeo, pretty much. But not in black-white... Oh, fuck, I want to the cursor off. Screen. There we go. All right. In black-white, like, Rotom W is such a nice check, just not countered. Now, you can't rely on it to be only check to ground types. Um, because eventually the Lando C is going to hit U-turn two or three times, and then you're fucked. Or it's going to be, like, a Swords Dance set on it or, gu or Guard Chomp, and then you're, and you're fucked. But, like, it's such a nice check. Um... And against Rain, oh my god, once you burn the Therathorn, it's just so basically good, especially if you keep status off of it. I mean, just the way you position your Rotom W early on in games opens up so many holes later in games. I think this is something that a lot of newer players like, like totally miss out on. Like, for example, I've seen myself give like my sand bulky offensive teams to a million like newer players or like guys that aren't familiar with Black White, and maybe they were around back then, but they didn't really play OU off actually. And then from there, they, like, lead with Rotom W turn 1, so it's, like, a good lead, right? But then they see a Ferrothorn, and instead of Wisping turn 1, they Bolt Switch, and, like, 9 out of 10 times, that's just this fucking stupid. Like, the way you position yourself with Rotom W early game, oh, it's just a tempo. The way early games are played, I almost have, like, ingrained in my mind with a lot of teams. Like, I, in certain matchups, I'm always going to lead to specific things, and even if they, like, counteract that, like, the worst it could be is, like, a neutral early game, assuming I don't get, like, completely outplayed and they take, like, unnecessary risks. And if that happens, then you just got to shake your opponent's hand and say, hey, you were able to risk it, and that's good for you. Sorry, just moving something out of my screen. But, I mean, yeah, like, black-white early games, the, the reason why I think that I have so much success in black-white, and I, I have had, I've won Ribbon Tour, I dominated Smog Tour, I'm 26, 4-2 SPL, I kind of got unlucky against Puck. 4-2 World Cup, I got fucked unlucky against the Italian sub. Um, I won um, the global money thing. I won Lutra's championship. That wasn't the ribbon. I won both. Like I, I've won like a fucking million Black White Tours in the last year. And I, I think that I'm slowly becoming one of the people that has the most metagame knowledge in the tier. If not, like, I, I feel like at this point I'm a Black White nerd pretty much. And my knowledge and metagame presence is just like... I really fucking know the intricacies of black and white. And feel free to disagree with me on stuff. It's just how I feel, and I'm very passionate and strong about this tier. But, like, the way in which you play early games is kind of... It kind of grows more and more constant as you play more and more in my eyes. Some people don't notice this. I've happened to take quite a notice and liking to this. And Rotom W gives you so much of an open field dynamic and a lot of matchups. And it's just, like... It's kind of foolproof if you hit your will o wisps and potentially have your pumps. And, like, you play it right. Like... Rotom W is just such a great door opener. Such a great crippler. It's such a great momentum generator. I just... It's hard to put it in tangible, like, phrases, but, um... Like, just Rotom W is great. And if you use it on your bulky offensive teams, and you build the teams right to where you're not, like, trying to use it to be, like, your only water resist, or your only Keldeo check, or your only ground type check, then it's gonna be good. 
But if you try and overline it, then you're sloppy team building. And that's where um, the notion of like the BKC Jirachi types back in like 16 and 15 were like, oh, Run W is bad. It's not bad. It was just misused for so many years. And I feel like the teams I've been building the bulky offensive teams and the teams you've been seeing this SBL made a lot better use of it. And I think that people are finally starting to notice how good Road and W is, especially against Rain Humes, but also just in general at crippling and setting the board and whatnot and making sure you get what you want in positions. Road and W is just like a game manager for Pokemon. It's so great. Anyway, I've already gone way over time with like the first two Pokemon, so let's get through this. Um, needless to say, I'm high run W to be up this high. Um, Alex is Pokemon Pokemon that's historically been A plus in my eyes, like for the last like couple of years, but it's finally dropping down. You're seeing much more Rio Nicholas, much less Alex Zam. Um, I just think it's kind of the direction of tier right now. I've seen less and less Alex Zam throughout SPL, but it's still good. Um, it's great against weatherless offense and um, rain offense on sand. Um, Right now, Alakazam is solid, but it relies so much on hitting Focus Blast. Like, if I hit one more Focus Blast, then I had a fucking one smog on tour, man. And I, and I know I got lucky in the Oras game. So, like, I'm not saying, like, I got lucked in Smog Tour, but that Black White game was fucking dumb, man. I mean, and Alakazam was part of the reason why it was dumb. And Alakazam's just great, though. Like, I mean, if you hit your Focus Blast, it's so phenomenal. Um, Just the fast, sash nature of it in a pretty fast-paced metagame, like Black and White. <laughs> Um, is just kind of good. And Magic Card's so great. I mean, you run a Thunder Wave for Volcarona, H Face for the four times ground. Um, shit, can you hear that vacuum in the back? I hope not. Um, if this video is ruined, I'm gonna be pretty sad. But anyway, yeah, no, Alex Sam is just phenomenal presence. Um, Psychic Focus Blast are staples. You got like HPS, you'd run Grass Nut for Tar, like ABR's been on. Um, Shadow Ball slash Signal Beam are conventional uh, choices for opposing Psychic types. Such as Rear Nicholas, Latios, Posing Ozam, um, even the rest Celebi, I guess, Slowbro, etc. Um, Ace Press is great. Thunder Wave is great. Encore is underrated as fuck. You can even run Knockoff for um, like Chapel Berry, so you'd only have to hit one Focus Blast or Leftovers on something like Skarm. Or even um, on which, fucking Exedrill. Especially defensive Exedrill, Knockoff Leftovers is cool. I'm um, trying to search around like Psychic. So yeah, um, Sorry, I just responded to the snap. Um, yeah, but I mean, Alexander's just pretty great. Um, it's not at its peak right now, but it's still pretty good. And hit being here is kind of low, if anything, for it historically. So definitely wouldn't go much lower. Um, Tentacle's next, and Tentacle's a fucking demon to deal with. Um, I might only do A. Uh, a. I think I'm only going to do A for this. Yeah, no, fuck. Um, I wish I could just zoom in because I'm kind of luring you guys and think I'm doing A minus. But no, I, I don't think I'm with time, unfortunately. But um, the Tentacle is just pretty great. Um, it's just so hard to kill in rain, and um, it having spin plus toxic slash toxic spikes plus skull plus protect. I, I've even ran knockoff on it more and more lately. Of late. Um, it's just a great Pokemon. Um, subsets are pretty good too. Um, yeah, I mean it's so hard to kill. I mean you just I, I've listened to BKC and ABR like talk about how hard it is to kill, and they're right. Tentacles are freaking demon, and it kind of necessitates specific things like Jellicence or Runiculous, um, for example. And I don't find it actually as like unbearable, but I feel like it's been like so good for like a couple years now. And people are maybe just catching on as of like last year or two. It is much better than Star it is like not much, but like somewhat better than Starmie on Rain. And like I mean obviously Starmie still has a niche, like it's pretty clear, but it's not like every team you need Starmie on offense. Like it works out in both ways. So um yeah. Fuck. I am like running out of things to say. I'm sorry, I'm like off focus and fucking Snapchat on this one right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, Tentacle is great. It um, it controls the field pretty well. It gets Scald Burns at the right time, and then it's like fucking impossible to manage. Um, just dictates a lot of games. Um, it's hard to kill. Um, it checks Keldeo, which is great as well. Um, some argue that it's harder to get in than you'd like because it doesn't like counter a ton, but I think it's pretty easy to get in just because it's not naturally frail and it gets so much recovery and has protect. So, especially, um, when you're going for a lot of mid rounds with rain teams, I just think that technical is like great to make use of. It's a really good addition. Honestly, I am even a bit higher on than this, but it's hard to make it above any of these Pokemon. That's the thing. Like if I could make like A or A, a plus, like even more bloated or like top heavy, I could, I would, but like just given how many good things are in the game right now, I think it's a testament to how much I like the tier in itself and a lot of options right now. But given that something has to be below something else, you know, everything's relative. That's the whole point of variability ranking. So yeah. Um, Tentacle's great. It's really hard to manage, especially for uh, if rain is up. 
um, good defensive utility, but even better, um, just practical utility, field setting, statusing, etc. Um, you don't want to fuck with technical. You don't want to allow it to have too many free turns. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. Um, that's just how it is. And while I don't feel like it necessitates like specific counterplay, you have to be aggressive against it or like risk burns at specific times. And that in itself is quite alarming. Because if you face a lucky tentacle, you could just be screwed on any given day, in any given matchup. So yeah, um, tentacle is great. I'm sorry it's kind of all over the place, but yeah. Um, and Bloom is something I was actually pretty low on until recently. Um, I created that um, the the Spore Swords Dance facade set that's actually been seeing quite a bit of usage. Um, I'd be partial for it. I know Solon's been using this team with it. Actually, I've seen like Solon and like Kingler and a bunch of others. I think it's not really black. I'm sure Solon or someone built it. It was like Thunderous, Balloon, Aito, Drachi. I think there's Tentacle, maybe a, a Gladios or a Kelly. I don't remember the last, honestly. Um, but that team is really nice. Um, I, and I, I think that kind of is where you want to fit like those Balloon. And it's just so nice that luring in the Amoongus and just kind of fucking with Sand Balance. The main thing that you just like about it is that it's walled by Jellicent. And I guess the rare Gengar, because it's a coverage is normal plus um fighting. But man, Balloon is just so so nasty with that set, the facade set, um, and it's kind of just upping its viability. But also like specifically like the the technician sets are so threatening. I know Ajama is a huge advocate of them, and he's used them pretty well historically. But also like Remedy used to be pretty big. I like the French Pokemon honestly. Um, but in general, it's just good. Um, fighting Jam and Life Orb both. Um, it's kind of annoying because, like, well, nothing really counters it besides maybe some Moongus. Like, even that fighting jump focus punch, forget about it. But, um, like, it's still, like, it's kept in check just by killing itself in lack of defensive presence. But it having priority and being so strong is, like, really just, like, nice. Um, I love Berloom. I just find it hard to use, so I kind of ranked it a bit lower than some people might have it. But, no, Berloom is great. And even um the bulk up generic um, Berloom poison. You know, I know um, We Three Kings likes that. Um, it's pretty solid. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can't really go wrong with Bloom. It's just solid, cemented in, in the middle of A rank. It's even above Pokemon like Heatran and Starmie, which are historically fantastic in Black White. So yeah, um, speaking of Heatran and Starmie, let's get to Heatran first, and we're gonna get to Thunderous Team and Starmie next. Um, so Heatran, um, honestly, for a while, it kind of felt misplaced in Black White, because, like, sure, it was a steel type, but it was a steel type that got fucked by rain, didn't provide spikes, um, but as of late, you've noticed a bit of resurgence, because... First and foremost, it does great against the Sun teams with the trio ban. Like, the trio in Diglett getting banned all through a Rain Trap is nice in itself for Heatran. But then you also see, notice that a lot of these Rains are using, like, the mixed Jirachi set, and it being, like, a pretty hard counter to that if it doesn't get knocked off is so nice. Um, and combine that with um, the BKC types using the, like, Magma Storm Hidden Bar so that's just anti meta. It's so impossible to switch into. Um, it protects Lefty's Strand, never dies, and Magma Storm plus Sand. Plus the recoil from Magma, not the recoil, the, 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 the like residual damage from Magma Storm is just so fucking impossible to like check. Even if you're like Heatran or Rotom W, like you're gonna die out. Um, and then like Toxic Range, it sets up rocks quite reliably. Um, even the water type spinners like aren't really safe against it because they can get earth powered or burnt or toxic. So, yeah, I mean, Heatran's just such a nice pick right now, I would say. Um, hmm. Yeah, I just, I love Tran, and well, I know like. And a lot of other gems are going to see it higher than this, like Oros, Osan, DPP. Like, Black White, it's always been held back to, like, A and minus levels, if only because Rain is, like, so prevalent and it's taken advantage of. But also, the competition in Steel types is much more defined in this generation than pretty much any other, in a sense that Skarmory and Ferrothorn have always been better than it, and Jirachi was, like, S rank forever, and then I'm um, still pretty good. And now you've got Extra, which can run special defenses as well, um, while spinning. So, there's competition for the slot, competition for the niche. All things considered, Heatran is just quite good, but there is competition, so it's while it's a great Pokemon, it's hard to rank it any higher than this. Um, in fact, a lot of people probably have it even lower, um, which is fair. Um, anyway, next is Thunder's Therian. Um, great Pokemon in itself as well. Um, it's seen a lot of viability rise over the last year, quietly though. Um, it's one of the best Rain Sweepers. Like, it's risen above Tornadus, and perhaps even above Starmie. Sorry, just a sip of water there. Um, but yeah, the agility set with three attacks is just so good. Um, you'll see leftovers as item more often than that, but Ice Gem is quite nice to kill Amoongus in two and kill Latios after Stealth Rock, etc. Usually run modest on it as well. I mean, you kill opposing Thunderous T after um, 
minimal recoil as residuals as well um with ice gem but leftovers is a bit better and more consistent um i'd say shit i just need more water sorry <sighs> okay better um then there's also like substitutes that um I actually sub agility without a fighting move which is really cool with burns and knocks um fair doesn't always break sub especially if it's burnt and then you kind of just wreck havoc you could sub up or you get agility up and sweep and they don't expect both either so that's really cool um i posted that in the iowa thread after sbl um sub three attacks is insanely threatening too but the issue with that is that it's kind of limited to like one or two kills against offense whereas agility can just clean the sweep like if you see my game against McMegan World Cup, Thunderous just fucking went off. That was amazing. But yeah, um pretty cool, I'd say. Thunderous is just great. Um it's better and better with time. And you've even seen like people like investing in like some bulk or Notice that it isn't like completely frail with leftovers despite Stealth Rock vulnerability. Like sure it's like on the frailer side, but it lives a hit from a lot of things where then it could like just wreck havoc because there's not much actual hard counterplay to it. No one really uses Gastrodon anymore, and that's the extent, that and Chansey. And Nasty Plot in itself is good too, but less common right now. Double Dance is still okay, but Fighting Moves is so nice for Tar, um, for Drill especially, and Ferrothorn, of course. Um, so yeah, while it is a, a bit limited in what it can do, there are a lot of things it can do just with less consistency than at, at peak sets. And the peak set really is Agility 3A or Sub Agility or, or Sub 3A, as well as Nasty Plot variants and Choice variants, which I think are kind of bad. So yeah, um, those sets represent its A rank here and why it's like ahead of shit like Terrakion and Magnezone, who have really been solid pick server. And I mean, you see Mian Chao, oh, other good black white Pokemon as well. Um, anyway, Starmie um is tied with Thunderous T, and I kind of tied them because they're both like really good range threatening Pokemon. Thunderous T is more common right now, but Starmie used to be like one of the great main threats in black white. So ranking it much lower than this, if at all, would just feel like robbery to it. Um. Specs Army is always going to be absolutely fucking ridiculously threatening, um, of course. But then we got like the Life Orb Analytic and like even like Leftovers National Cure Hydro, Thunder, Ice, um, Rapid Spin, which I've been using a lot because he showed me during World Cup is just solid. Um, Starmie is just great. Um, the coverage it has, plus the strength and range, plus the ability to spin on pretty much anything is just so convenient. And it usually doesn't even like sweep through per se, but it sets up for shit such as. Um, Latios or Keldio to do the sweeping once it's weakened its check. So it's just so nice. Um, it's a great synergetic force, underrated. And while it's harder to integrate on the team, since so it's not really hard to counter anything, at least kind of soft checks Keldio in a sense they can 1v1 it. Um, there's a lot of resistance and it has a lot of speed, so it's nice. Um, well, again, harder to use in technical and definitely a bit less directly annoying. It's hard to switch into for a lot of teams and it's just downright great um, in my eyes. And maybe it's less of a paper threat than you'd then you'd like it to be, but in practice, it's a great Pokemon, a great addition, and Starmie will always be um, around here, a bit above it, um, a bit above it on its better days, of course. But yeah, um, Starmie's great, and I'd say ranking it here is pretty fair. Um, Thrakion next. Thrakion saw a huge surge last SPL, still leads the choice band and set, but that died down a ton with the rise of Gliscor, and nothing was reacting to. You've seen even like Slowbro Mew kind of react to it as well, um, and Ryu Nicholas now too. Choice so band is um, still fine, but. That is great, but now you're seeing a lot of the Swords Dance Rock Gem Protect set, um, which Scott's for Scarf Ground and like Latios if it's scared of Tar. Um, Swords Dance Protect is just so good on track, again, I would say. Um, and it's really good right now. It's lots hanging on to its rank and A rank, but I could see it going A minus. It's just harder to use right now than you'd like, but it's still quite good. Um, not really much else to say about it. Like, you see Choice Band, you see the Swords Dance Protect set. Um, Sub is fine too. Scarf is kind of garbage, though. I wouldn't rank Scarf very highly. It's just, just good to check Volk. Like, it's such a bad Pokemon outright. Um, it doesn't have the break how you want. Anyway, Magnezone. Um, a, Magnezone saw a fuck ton of usage during SPL. And people are finally figuring out how to properly use it, which is with the um, Sunny Day set, which I, I like to take credit for popularizing because I feel like I was the first one to use it. But people give credit to, like, all kinds of people. Um, but, like, yeah, I like, fucking 2015, I, I started using this shit. Um, and I know that it's pretty much the standard now. I feel like it's just so nice for um, beating shit in rain. Um, if you sunny day in the Pharaoh and then it shit dies and you change rain, so you gotta get Python and get etc. Uh, but yeah, sunny day, hidden power fire, um, thunderbolt, and then filler. Um, my personal favorite right now is magnet rise with air balloon as the item because that means you could trap X drill um, a lot of the time as well, which is really cool. And also means that ground types have to think twice. 
Um, and Magnet Rise also means you could trap Bronzong, and the Bronzong teams right now are, like, obnoxious to Sand offense. You can see Magnet on a lot. Uh, they're obnoxious here, like Landris T, Latios, Garchomp type of Pokemon. So, yeah, um, using Magnezone in that role is really nice. You just come into Bronzong and you just trap it, so it's really cool. Um, and you can still run Chapel Berry, Custop Berry, um, a couple other things. And last slot, you could run, like, um, you want flash kind of, I guess, thunder wave, toxic, um, explosion, metal sound, etc. Um, it's just a really cool and somewhat flexible Pokemon. Specs is fine. Scarf is okay only on Sun. I'll be at Magnezon in itself is great, and it's 207 now, so I'm gonna end this off here, and I'm gonna get to A minus and probably B plus next video. Um, if B plus goes down, um, so yeah, um, oh, you'll see some of the Pokemon I have referenced in this video there, but I'm sorry this one's a bit shorter than I'd like, but. To settle for now, um, this is Finch. Um, 